Hello everyone, Jose Rodriguez here again. Today I received a rather interesting question from a viewer who wanted to know if there were any visible differences between prints made with thermal type printheads, such as those used in Canon printers, and cold firing printheads, such as those used on Epson printers. Now physically the droplets are indeed different, and I'll give you a really crappy diagram version of it. Cold fire droplets, they land on the paper and they retain their little circular shapes. They spread a little bit due to the wicking action of most papers. Glossy is less, matte is the most. Heat fired droplets, they have irregular edges, like little flower petals. I call them crenated edges. And they tend to fit a little bit better together. As you can see, you have the possibility of having space with no ink between some of the larger droplets. Remember that printers nowadays have variable droplet technology, so they can vary the diameter of the droplets or the volume of the droplets from the picoliter uh, amounts. So, is there a difference on a final print viewed at a normal distance? One printed with the heat-fired type printhead, in cold fire type printed? Probably not. Probably not. My experience has been that there is no difference visually. Color has to do with more the profiling and your printer settings than the actual droplets laid on paper. The dithering is handled by the print engine of each printer and it figures out the best way to blend dots together to give you the most continuous looking tonal ranges on your prints and you would have to literally put your print on a low power microscope to be able to see any differences between the two. As far as I have been able to determine I cannot see the difference and I have a PA100, I have a Pro 3880, Pro 3800 and all of the Canons from the 9500 series Pro 100, Pro 10, Pro 1, and soon a Pro 1000. So I pretty much have all ends covered. And so far, no difference, regardless of the type of paper that I use between the two. So that is good. And at least it's an interesting subject to kind of examine if you really, really like to get into this very long hair type examination of technical aspects of printing. But in the real world, no difference whatsoever, so don't worry about it. Now, I was contacted by the person that runs the Ardenberg Institute, the folks that do the color fast testing of inks and papers. Mark McCormick asked me to run an experiment because he has no knowledge of refilling and, and using refillable carts. So the test will go as follows. As we know, the PA-100 from Epson has an improved ink set. And the improvements are basically in the blacks and the yellow. The yellow is the most important color and the one that causes the most color shifts as it starts to fade. It's very fade prone. So apparently that's one of the huge improvements on the P800 ink set. So now the question is, can the 3880 be retrofitted to use those two colors, black and yellow? And in the long run, probably all of them. So, what is the difference between a PA-100 print and a 3880 print? And that will be tested. And then what I will do is I will buy a PA-100 black card, and I will buy a PA-100 yellow card, extract all of the ink, and load it into one of my empties for the 3880-3800 series. And we'll be running then a complete third set of prints running with a hybrid ink set on the 3880, which will contain the normal K3 colors, except for yellow and black coming from the PA-100 side. And then we'll send all of those prints to the Institute and have them run their light fastness tests and see whether there's an improvement on the 3880, because apparently even the 3880 with this OEM ink set suffers from fading, mostly on the yellow. When you do the accelerated type fading test that they run, which means 50, 100 years worth of light. So that will be really interesting. Now, 
he was recently at one of the Photo Plus shows, I think it was in New York, and he approached the Epson representative that was there pushing the P800 and proposed that idea, and the guy literally laughed in his face and was very indignant. So he left there a little bit discouraged and kind of upset at the reaction of Epson. So we're going to take that under our belt, and I'm going to run that test because Epson said it's impossible to do. Don't say that to me. Don't ever say that to me. So I'm going to take the challenge. I'm going to run the test. I'm going to send them all the prints, and then he's going to put them through the fading type tests and see what the differences are. If we can bring the 3880 to the level of the P800, then all of you who have 3880s will be able to enjoy the improved image quality that the P800 supposedly brings to the table. And that will be fun. I'm in for any kind of challenge. So that is it for now. I'm going to go up and eat a little bit of chicken pot pie that my wife made and uh, relax for the rest of the evening. Tomorrow is the 4th of July. We're getting rain, so I think the local fireworks will probably be canceled, at least for one night. Okay, so please like, please subscribe, and as always, happy printing, everyone.